Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Gib Mendelson, and uh, in the absence of our chairman, Jay Chatmus, uh, I will be acting as chairman this evening, so you'll have to deal with the second string. Um, I'd like uh, each of our fellow board members to introduce themselves, uh, starting with uh, Steve LaPlante. I'm Steve LaPlante. Um, I'm Jim Walsh. Len Galino. Joe Guglielmetti. In my train. Oh, yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, <clears throat> under old business, if we might first take a look at any corrections of the minutes of the last meeting of the Zoning Board on May 25th, 2004. Um, I'd like to call attention to, uh, first of all, to our excellent secretary, Lori, uh, that my name does not contain an H. Um, then on line uh, 43, um, I think we should delete the last two words in that line so that the sentence then reads, he stated that she had the option to delay the case for more members to be present. <clears throat> On page seven, line 15, The next to last word um, in between could and the word acceptable, if you would uh, interline the word be. I have no further corrections. Does any other uh, board member have any corrections to the minutes? Yes, uh, just one. Um, page seven, line 26. And I'd appreciate it if any board member has a different recollection, but my recollection was that the vote we took was on limiting, was on a limited business trips to two daily. Um, that was my recollection. The actual vote we took was based upon, um, it would be terminated upon transfer and also it would limit the business trips to two daily and that was the vote that we took. I think that's correct. Mm -hmm. Are there any other corrections? Could I have a motion to approve the uh, minutes as amended? So moved. Second? Uh, all in favor? Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. Well, uh, given the uh, numbers out there, um, there is an obvious um, uh, great deal of interest in the uh, item on our agenda for new business tonight. Um, and as I'm sure that each of you are aware, there has been an order To a notice of violation and an order to correct um, against the building permit number 040240 concerning a new dwelling at 52 Shipwreck Cove Road. The stop work order was issued because the new structure uh, has a height in excess of 35 feet in violation of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Ordinance, Chapter 19, Article 6, Section 19, 6-E, 6-1, Paren E, and Section Section 19-611, Paren E, covering the maximum building height under our ordinance. <clears throat> um, this stop order was issued by Bruce Smith, our code enforcement officer. There's been appeal uh, taken by the applicant from that order to correct and notice. Um, to, to help us understand the issue at hand, I'd like Mr. Smith uh, to give us a brief history uh, uh, concerning this uh, notice and the order to correct. Bruce? 
Uh, it's pretty. It's pretty basic. Um, I went down to the site because I questioned the height. Um, I took what we call a pop level, which is a, a handheld uh, level that you can cite elevations from a, from a given point. I took points around the foundation six, seven, eight feet out where there was undisturbed soil um, that seemed to be the average, uh, the original grade, and shot to the foundation and found that the foundation, I thought, was some 15 inches higher than it should be. Um, I then talked to the Freedmans, who, um, and I suggested that Owen Haskell, uh, surveyors who worked, has worked for Freeman in the past, Mr. Friedman, um, come out and see if they could establish original grade since there was never a benchmark or, or an original grade mark done at the start of the project. They came out and based on our formula, which you have a copy of for determining the average original grade, that's at the uh, 1988 post. Um, <clears throat> they figured the grade um, and figured that the height was in excess of some 14 inches, give or take six inches. Um, I took, uh, it, as a result, I placed a stop work order on the, uh, on the uh, building until we could uh, either correct or find reasons why it didn't have to be corrected. And hence, uh, Mr. Friedman applied for, for uh, an appeal of, of my decision. Um. <clears throat> This handout that uh, that we were just given tonight, I, I think uh, it's unlikely that that uh, many of us had an opportunity to have had an opportunity to look at this yet, Bruce. I wonder if you'd be kind enough to sort of run through the methodology that you use to measure grade. <clears throat> well, basically, they take it's a, it's it's what we might call a weighted average. Of, you take the the segment length of every segment of a building, if it's, if it's a four-sided building, then there's four segments. If it's multi, multiple, then you, then you take each one, but you take the center point from an established grade, and it can be elevation zero, elevation 100, whatever. They, they establish a, a grade just for, as a reference point, uh, the survey is, and then they, they, they shoot from the grade to the level of that, of the of the grade at the midpoint of that segment of the foundation, that 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 length of that perimeter, they then take and multiply that grade by the length of perimeter. They total them up, and then they divide by the the total length of the perimeter, and it comes up with a weighted average. This method is found to be pretty accurate. Um, within a few inches, um, and it's within 0.3 feet, actually. Um, so since 1998, because there was nothing in the ordinance that really told us, gave us guidance as to how we determine original grade, um, this is the methodology that we've been using for projects, even with the planning board or whatever, for height, and it's, it's proved to be an effective method. All right. <clears throat> Is there a, a representative for the applicant here? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Would you uh, please step up to the lectern if I introduce might yourself? Oh, just one other thing before we Certainly. start. The, the, the second thing that I passed out was was the information I got on June 4th from Owen Haskell, who used the methodology to come up with the average original grade following the OST. Methodology. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, members of the board, I appreciate you uh, getting this on the agenda and getting it heard so quickly. My name is Paul Bulger. I'm the attorney for Drew Friedman. Uh, Drew LLC, sole member LLC, uh, is the actual owner of the property. Uh, Drew Friedman's principal. Um, with us tonight is Johan Buisman of Northeast Civil Consultants. Uh, Johan will be uh, doing some calculations measuring building height. Um, 
I intend to address background, and any questions that I can't answer can be directed to Mr. Friedman. And if you have any questions of Mr. Friedman, um, of course, free to ask them. Um, I know there's a great deal of interest in this uh, project, and uh, some of it's unwanted, but nevertheless, the building's been built. Um, we understand that some of the neighbors are opposed, um, and some may feel that the, the, the building and the structure shouldn't be there at all. But that's not why we're here. This interpretation appeal is about some relatively simple questions, as Bruce pointed out. The town's ent entitled to the reasonable interpretation of its ordinance. The OST Associates method is not in your ordinance. It's a reasonable, it's a reasonable methodology for interpretation. Um, the concern that the applicant has is that the OST method was used for a 12-sided building, and it was also used for measuring a uh, uh, commercial building in the town center under circumstances where a topographical map had been generated. In this case, this being a, a building permit for a house, Mr. Friedman was not required to submit a topographical map and uh, therefore there, there is no uh, topographical uh, map. So we are at the point in the, the infraction, if you will, or the stop work order issued at that point after the foundation had been installed and 95% uh, of the structure had been in place. So we're uh, stuck with the unenviable task of trying to reconstruct what is original grade and uh, Ellen Brewer and, and uh, John Swan and Owen Haskell have said, you know, we'd be the first ones to tell you, we're not measuring original grade, we're trying to interpolate original grade from certain data points. If you look at uh, what they have actually measured, they took uh, several data points, but they stuck with an, the average of four data points off the southerly side of the the foundation in place, 10 feet, and on the northerly side, 10 feet, both, both of which, or all of which measurements, are on the downslope of the property, therefore exaggerating differences. Um, what, we did, uh, what we did in response to that was to, um, at the urging of, of Owen Haskell, was to interview the excavation contractor and the foundation contractor, Falmouth Foundations, represented by Dana Sterling and uh, uh, Skip Murray for LP Murray and Sons. And they, and I prepared and submitted their affidavits, which very simply state they're trying to establish better data points through their sworn statements. And what they've stated in, is, and they're corroborating, is that the on the easterly side of the property, the ocean side, that the um, the cut, the foundation cut, and the footings were at least three inches below original grade. With respect to the westerly side of the property that the foundation cut at the northwesterly corner was 24 inches. Um, and I guess I have to add one other thing. That is, there was a one-story cottage on the property that has been retained. That one-story cottage had to be removed. It was pulled back on a sled by Jim Mary. Jim Mary called in the excavation contractor prior to moving because he couldn't move it because of the height of the grade at the northwest corner. Both the grade at the, uh, the measurement of the grade at the easterly side of the property, the three inch below grade where the footings were set, and at that northwesterly corner, which was two feet higher, are not taken into account in the data uh, presented, the data points presented in the Owen Haskell analysis. Um, I've gotten ahead of myself. I'm really, I was really directing those comments at what Bruce was stating about the methodology used by Owen Haskell. Um, I want to give a little background and history of the acquisition of the property and what was done by Mr. Friedman in preparation for this because someone could, from newspaper reports, could get the wrong idea that he's somehow a scofflaw or didn't intend to comply with the ordinance. I think that Mr. Smith um, would stipulate, and, and because he met with me before the property was even acquired, 
when Mr. Friedman was in the process of purchasing the property from the estate, uh, I came into the office to discuss with Bruce the um, uh, what we thought were the general parameters of a plan, which was to pull the existing cottage back, and we wanted to know how to comply with shoreland zoning, the space and bulk regulations that apply to the new structure, and how much, how much of the uh, site that was left between Shipwreck Cove Road coming in and the setback, the 75-foot setback from the ocean, how much of that footprint could be developed. And so we, we at that time had Owen Haskell go out and they had done the perimeter survey work. Uh, this was last fall. They went out and they uh, flagged and marked where a building envelope could be placed to be in compliance. Actually, they just generated the plan. Subsequently, when the excavation contractor was hired, he requested that the setback be uh, marked and that the uh, building envelope be marked prior to excavation, which only makes sense. However, uh, in addition, uh, Mr. Friedman submitted uh, detailed plans. The planning office has a file that's about this thick. Detailed plans and drawings from Hearthstone, Inc. with the building application. There were several revisions to that, and Mr. Friedman was in communication with Mr. Smith. Um, those plans uh, have largely been executed upon, in fact, um, so much so that I don't think there's any variation be between the plan that was submitted and the building that's been built. Um, that plan does show a three-foot foundation above grade. Um, the foundation wall for this property is a 48-inch wall. Um, not an eight-foot wall or some other uh, depth. And, and so um, the point being simply that there was a great deal of attention paid uh, to all of these issues as part of um, construction on the site. So um, what we come to is the question of height and interpretation of height in the ordinance. And uh, under the definitions on page 6 of the ordinance, 19-1-3, it states that building height is the vertical distance from the average grade to the mean level of the highest gable or slope of a hip roof. Um, that means that we are not measuring from the slab to this point, but we're measuring to what is the midpoint between the eave and the ridge peak. So this is our eave. There's a measurement here. Um, this distance is 18, six, 18 feet, or 19 feet, 16, 6 inches and 1 quarter. Um, the, ha the mean distance, or half the distance, is 9 feet, 8 inches and an eighth, which is shown on the plan, which puts our midpoint right here. The distance from the slab to the midpoint is a fixed distance of 31, 5, and 11 sixteenths inches. Again, shown on the plan. Um, so from the midpoint to the slab is what we're measuring. And that's the portion of the structure that's, that's fixed. In addition, we have a three and a half foot slab on top of a foundation wall. So by adding these up, we can come up with a fixed and determinable measurement. It is not, however, the measurement from the top of the wall to the midpoint that we're concerned about. The difficulty is in measuring original grade. And I think if you look at the Ellen Brewer calculation, you can see how she arrived at that, and Johan will speak to that issue in more detail. Um, Again, with reference to the ordinance, the maximum building height is 35 feet. So if we have a three-foot foundation, a three-and-a-half-foot slab, three-and-a-half-inch three and slab, and we have 31, 5, and 11 sixteenths from the top of the slab to the midpoint, which is what we're trying to measure, we can get uh, a fixed distance. Um, and the, then the question is only, how high is that foundation wall relative to original grade? 
Mr. Bolger, what's your site for the midpoint calculation in the ordinance? Um, that midpoint, the def there is no definition of midpoint in the ordinance, Mr. Galino. The midpoint was given to us by Mr. Smith as the methodology for measuring from slab for height of the structure. Though the, the explanation you just gave of between the eave and the top of the point of, of, to the ridge, that, that explanation or definition, which section are we referring it's to? It's in the definition section. Definition section. It is that, it, uh, Mr. Galino, it's page, page six, 19-1-3. Okay. This is not a flat roof structure, obviously, so building height is the vertical distance from the average original grade to the mean level of the highest gable or slope of a hip roof. If I might, that, that's the same definition and it's in, it came from Boca Building Code, the building code that we follow and, and the mean level in in Boca says halfway, okay. at the halfway point, so. So you agree with his explanation? I do. <clears throat> Coming back to what I said earlier, then our only variable is original grade. And at this site, if you went to the site, you'd find foundation height relative to grade that varies quite a bit from one measurement to another. What that doesn't tell us is what was original grade. When the foundation hole is dug, obviously, dirt is put to the north and the south side of the foundation to be to create uh, the new grade when the uh, foundation has been completed and the structure's up. So the question is how to best uh, measure that. Um, the OST methodology cited by Mr. Smith is certainly appropriate when you have a topographical map and you're trying to weight the uh, measure of grade when you've got, in, in that case, what was a 12-sided figure, they, um, they weighted the uh, uh, measurement of each of the sidewalls by taking the measurement of the sidewalls and multiplying it times um, grade off the topographical map. Again, in this case, we don't have that. What we have to do is go back and take best evidence of what was original grade and incorporate it into uh, a methodology that that will come up with a determination of what that grade is. Um, I think at this point, uh, I'd like to turn the actual determination of how or how we determine that grade and how it's uh, uh, a superior method to what is the OST methodology employed by Owen Haskell. I will say that I spoke to to um, Ellen Brewer this week. She was in New Hampshire, was unable to attend. She told me by all means that if the excavator could recall the depth from original grade that he dug, or if the foundation, uh, the foundation company, in this case, Falmouth Foundations, and Dana Sterling could tell us where the footings were relative to original grade, that that would be best evidence relative to interpolations 10 feet off either side of the foundation. And if I may turn this over to Johan Buisman, I'll be available for questions afterwards. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Johan Buisman. I'm vice president of Northeast Civil Solutions. I'm sure you've seen Jim Fisher, my partner here several occasions. Um, Sir, would you be kind enough to uh, spell your last name for the oh, record? B-U-I-S-M-A-N. Johan, J-O-H-A-N-N. -N. I'm a professional land surveyor. Uh, I'm licensed in three states. Um, I'd just like to talk about data for a moment. Uh, and a lot of what we do uh, on a daily basis is deal with data. And, and as you know, data can take on many forms to be manipulated. And I just want to use a quick analogy about data. And one is, you know, there are a lot of people here tonight, say you wanted to get the average 
age of of everyone in this room, but you could only take a sample of four or six people. You know, we could get four or six people and get their age, but what methodology would you use to, to get that average, and how close would that really be to the truth? I mean, the best way to get it is to ask everyone and divide it by the number, and there you would have it. Um, but that always isn't the case in a lot of data that we work with in the data here tonight. So what we're going to do is take a sampling of this data and apply a methodology that we think would best fit to that. Um, like I said, the best way to do it is have the original data, but if that's not available, we have to look to other methods. Um, the methods that I looked at is all the information that was presented to me, um, and that is the <coughs> two affidavits and their recollection of the, uh, the depth at the time of the excavation, and also the information from Owen Haskell. All right, so we're going to take that data, and I'm just going to work with it for a moment. Um, to who, help, who provided you with these affidavits? Um, our client, uh, Paul Walter. They were the affidavits of whom? Oh, I'm sorry. These are the affidavits of, uh, of the contractor on the site. Uh, I believe you would have you know, a copy of uh, Murray and, uh, and Sterling, Dana Sterling. All right. Is that something you'll be providing us copies of? Uh, I did. You should have copies. We got these up. Okay, should I continue? Mr. Bolger, do you have any additional copies of the app? Yes, right here. Good. Oh, thank you.
Uh, you may proceed. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. Okay. Um, so we're talking about data, and that's sort of what I like to go on and talk about data. So I looked at all the data that was presented, both Owen Haskell and the data by the, uh, the contractors who actually saw when they dug what the depth of the uh, footing was in, in relation to the original grade, because that's what we're really looking after is the original grade on the site. So what I'd like to do is just walk through two quick drawings. I want to keep it fairly straightforward. Um, the other thing I'm going to refer to, and I might as well mention now, I drew a, a little hand sketch uh, this afternoon. I think you all have a copy of that. Um, you don't need to look at it quite yet, but I will be referring to it. Actually, I'm going to draw it out, walk you through that real quickly. I'm just trying to keep it real simple. All right. Um, first of all, the, we have to go back and, and when they kept, when Owen Haskell went out there, they had to capture that data. Obviously, the foundation was already in the site was disturbed. So what you have here is you have um, uh, the property lines like this, so, so the public can see. You have the building here, and since they couldn't capture any data right at the corners, they had to go until they hit original grade. Okay, so they had to go from seven to twenty feet outside where the building is to capture that. Now, is that representative of this area? Um, that's the question that we're going to be looking at. Um, I don't believe it necessarily is for a couple reasons, but we're going to look at all that. Uh, one of my thoughts on that is typically if there was a, a cottage here or any kind of structure, usually you have positive drainage away from that. I mean, most buildings have that, in which case this ground would be typically higher and you would drain away from that. The question is how much? Is it, is it six inches or is it three feet? We don't know, but there usually is positive drainage away from a structure. Um, so anyway, so they're capturing th this bit of information and from that what they do is interpolate between that because again you don't know what's going on in this section. And, and we're going to talk about this area here and I'm going to in the end have two bits of information for you. One at this corner and one at this corner. There's actually more information we can go into that also but I'm trying to keep it fairly straightforward. So what happens at this end is they capture an elevation here, an elevation here. They basically call it a straight grade through there and come up with an elevation that Bruce had mentioned, midpoint right here. All right, so I'll go to another drawing here. I'm going to refer to my sketch a little bit. Um, so now we're looking at a cross section, all right, and we're looking at the easterly end um, where the ocean is. So what you have here is you, they took a shot over here at uh, 98.08, okay, and that shows up on the Owen Haskell information. And then they took a shot over on this side at 98.26. So from that methodology, they drew a straight line and called that the grade, okay, and that shows up on the Owen Haskell plan. And from that, they take a point and I have to look back at the plan of uh, 9814, and what they do is basically add the 2602 together, come up with 28 hundredths and split it by two, and that's how they calculate a point mid-grade. It's a fairly straightforward process of doing that. So now we're looking at the site. The one property line is about here, and the other property line is on this side. Okay, so we're very close to the, where the, the fence is out there, to those property lines. Um, so those are fixed numbers, and that's how you basically interpret a lot of grades. I mean, we do it all the time. 
So um, this would be as we're facing the property from the road? Uh, I'm sorry, it's on the other side. We're at the ocean. ocean. We're at the Your ocean. back's at the, to the ocean, and you're looking towards the Toward buildings. The okay. Okay. Um, again, um, from the Owen Haskell um, plan, they show right now that there's a concrete slab, and the top of that slab is a 103.2. So we'll draw right there, and this is going to be 103.2, and that's going to be the top of the concrete slab that exists there today that everyone has seen. All right, that slab is is on the plans it's four inches, but typically it's it's three and a half where. Uh, you allow for four, but actually the concrete settles. You, uh, I used to be in the concrete business, so I, um, and you, anyway, you allow for four, you get about three and a half inches as a measurement. So, um, so we'll draw, and sorry for the, it's not a perfect drawing, three and a half inches there. Okay, so we now have an elevation at the bottom of that concrete slab at 102.9. Okay, and again, that's from information that was gathered by Owen Haskell. Now, from the affidavit and from the plans, um, they, they built a concrete foundation wall 48 inches. Okay, so we know that the wall is, is 48 inches. So this wall sits sort of like this. So you have uh, the 48 inches here, or four feet. Okay, and that's the, that's the height of the wall, all right? Um, with that, we get an elevation of 98, 98.91. Okay, now that wall sits typically, the construction is on a footing, and that footing is eight inches thick. It's 20 inches wide, eight inches thick. So we'll draw, this footing out, all right? And this is eight inches thick, all right? So at the bottom of that footing, okay, uh, that's an elevation of 98.24, okay? So I'm just going through the mechanics of taking the, the shots that Owen Haskell had, the shot on the floor, and then walking down through these, uh, what was built out there, all right? Now, what happens is you have this existing grade and they called it a straight shot. And, and if you have no other data, that's the best data to do is in, interpolate between two points. What happens is if you then come over and, and, and from their data calculate what that elevation is, this elevation here would be uh, 98.22, and this is 98.06. Okay, and basically what I'm doing is just calculating points on their grade. Are you, I'm sorry, sir, are you referring to this document here for your numbers? This, this plan here? Yes. This one? The site plan. And I guess I'm confused as well, though. You keep talking about 98.2. Yeah, is that above sea level? Or no. Where, okay. is that, where are you establishing a baseline from? Oh, um, datum. You can pick out a lot of different datums to begin with. Um, there's assumed datums, there's sea level datums. When you're out in the ocean, you, you, uh, ships navigate at low water as a datum. So in the world of surveying, there's like 10 different datums out there. Um, and, and, and feds have several different datums, not to go off, but they have 88, 29, whatever. And so it's an interesting thing is that not all elevations are on the same datum. There are a lot of datums out there. And actually now with the advent of GPS, there's, they're coming out with a better data from calculations. This particular, these particular shots done by Owen Haskell was done on an assumed atom, and they just assumed an elevation of 100 feet. The reason why they did that is because it's, it's very easily done. You just go to the site, you, you, you take a point 
uh, top of a manhole is what Owen Haskell used, but they use PK nails and utility poles, whatever. They say, okay, from here it's 100 feet, and all our numbers are relevant to that. So then what happens is a contractor, if, if a grade had been established, a contractor could shoot that point, know that's 100, and can do all their vertical calculations from there. Okay, so it establishes a baseline. It establishes references too. That's correct. That's correct. It's not a height above sea level or anything like that. So, and in, in your opinion, is there, is there anything wrong with that methodology for establishing a baseline? Um, <laughs> that's an interesting question. I'll try to make it brief. Um, it's good to have everything on one datum out there. You know, that if everything you were doing in a town or a given area, city of Portland, they all have on one datum so that the sewer department, their inverts are on that same datum. So if someone comes in with a finished floor, they'll know if that's based on the same datum, you say, okay, the finished floor is this, they already know that the, uh, the datum is the same datum for say the sewer or water and they know the inverts, they can calculate that dimension. Otherwise, if you have that in different datums, let's say the sewer department's on sea level and you assume 100, you can't relate those two numbers directly. Okay, so when you're doing projects that, of infrastructure, I think it's important to have that all in the same datum, and there's several different datums out there. Um, so it's good, if you do decide to have a datum, have one datum. Uh, the, the bad part is that, let's say you wanted this project to be on mean sea level, to find a benchmark, uh, they're getting more and more destroyed, so you may have to go down the road a mile, maybe five miles, to find that elevation to bring it in. That's why everyone assumes a, uh, a hundred feet as a benchmark, because it's very easily done. It's cost efficient. Well, I understand the benefit of a consistent application, but I, I guess what I'm asking is, is in, this is a single instance. So, in your opinion, your professional opinion, I'm not sure that you were really responding to my question. My, my question is, in this particular instance, yes. in your opinion, your professional opinion, is there anything uh, erroneous or, um, um, or is there a be better methodology oh, that could have I been used I to see. establish a baseline? I see. I see what your question is. No, in, in this particular instance, it really wouldn't have mattered whether you would have had NGV, which is one of the Fed's ones, of 98 or uh, 88 or 29, or even assumed 100 feet, because you're not relating it to anything else around you. Um, in the future, if you want to know, say, for FEMA insurance, for flood insurance, or things like that, that nature, or the DEP, I know in many towns has come up with a high water mark that they're using for setbacks. Uh, that's all based on a certain data. Then it all relates to each other. But when you're looking at this particular project, it wouldn't have mattered. Right. But it may matter in the future if you decide to look at other data and how that's reflected. Is that better? Yes, thank you. Okay. Right. Johan, I just had a question. Sure. Um, this, what you're drawing up there is relative to the site plan, I'm assuming, right? That looks yeah. from the ocean to the foundation. That's correct. But I just want, that, I, I, I just can't see that one um, measurement all right. Is that 94? Uh, sorry, a little scribbling here. No, just, uh, uh, this over here? No, to the, no, the next one over. The right, this, no, the next, that one. This one right here? Yes. This is 98.22. 98, okay. Yes, yeah, 98.22. Okay. I'm just trying to follow along on the site plan. Sure, sure. What I guess I'm trying to establish at this point is we'll just go over this again. Owen Haskell had shot a grade here of 98.26 right here and shot an elevation of 98.02 right here, okay? And they'd also shot a floor of 103.2. So those are all known facts from Owen Haskell. And, that's, it, it, and there's nothing wrong with their data whatsoever. What you then do is you, you know that the thickness of the concrete, you know the height of the wall, you know the footing, all right? Once I, so I can mathematically, or anyone, can come up with an elevation of 98.24 for the bottom of that footing. When I looked at this data, something interesting comes out. If you then draw a straight line grade, which you'd have to do to interpret that, you have no other information from the property line, basically the property line, right underneath that, is the grade 98.06, all right? And that would be what they would have used for their analysis. 
Well, that certainly is a different number than this 9824. So, all right, what does that mean? That means that the that, that bottom of that footing is about two inches, a little bit more, above, two and a half inches above the existing grade as they use in their calculation. Well, okay, maybe that's a possibility. Did they bring in fill? No, we have uh, information that no fill was brought into the site and placed on there. If anything, you know, you would want to place this footing on some good ground and not right even on top of the soil. You want to excavate at least six inches to a foot of topsoil to get on a good a structural sound ground. So by using this methodology going straight across, I don't believe that's correct just because I know that this wasn't up in the air. This is in fact should have been down here. Okay. This goes along then with the affidavit, um, which he had seen uh, this corner, and he said that when, when this was dug... You're referring to he? Who are you referring to, sir? I'm sorry. Um, to Murray. And he basically states in there that the top of the footing was three inches below the original grade as he had observed it. Okay, so on the, easter, on the easterly side, on the easterly at the southeasterly corner, at the southeasterly corner. So is that paragraph 15? Uh, let me take a look. Here. Uh, that is correct. That's paragraph 15. Okay. So with that being here now, uh, I can calculate that elevation because I know the top of the footing of being uh, 99.16. That's three inches above that. All right. When I compare that information to the grade directly below it, it's over a foot difference. All right. It's not a huge amount, but in this case, it, it happens to be a lot. And you just explained to me once more how you get a foot difference there. I didn't follow you. Um, sure. We started here with Owen Haskell's information near the property line. Yeah. Since this was all disturbed ground, they had to come up with a methodology. I follow that. Okay, to come up with this grade. So what I did is I, I know the length of this line yes. from their work. I know the grade that it calculates to be. So with that information, I can calculate any points along that line. So what I did is calculated a point that was directly below where that footing would have been, okay, based on the grades that they used. So with that, I can now establish a grade here, a calculated grade from Owen Haskell's information. Coming down here, I can work my way down through this and also come up with an elevation here. There happens to be about a two and a half inch difference between that. Now the affidavit says that in fact when he excavated here, he, the top of the footing was three inches below the existing grade, which makes sense because he probably came in and took some topsoil, took about a foot of topsoil, which is probably standard practice. Well that puts the grade at 99.16. That's basically taking the top of the footing, adding three inches to that. Well, when you compare those two numbers, that's, I don't know, it's about a foot and inch and a half, I would say, difference. The footing's eight inches, is that what you're uh, saying? Yes, the footing is eight inches. The footing is eight inches deep, 20 inches wide. So when I looked at that data, I thought, well, something's not quite right. Now, that would put this grade up here. So that means it would have been some sort of uh, rise to the center of that property and then dropping near the edges, which would sort of make sense because, again, you're looking for some positive drainage. We didn't know how much, but it certainly makes sense that, and we have information from both Owen Haskell and the contractor who visually saw that at this corner we have a grade. Okay, so what we're trying to do is look at every corner and see how close we can get to the actual foundation to come up with an elevation instead of using something that's from seven to 20 feet away, interpreting that data, can we get something closer? And that's what I was trying to do with this data. 
Okay, so we have one corner established there. Um, at, and that's the southwest corner. So now we're going to go to the opposite corner, all right? Um, and at that corner, at the northwest corner, after the excavation, there was still a, uh, a, a trunk of a tree that was still in place. There was a stump there that hadn't been disturbed. And Ellen from Owen Haskell went and, and shot a grade there, okay? And established that. Um, so that stump would be, uh, it's not quite true, but it's, it's over here. So we're looking again at this, north is to the right. Um, there's a stump there and you'll see that on my sketch. Uh, with that, we can establish a grade of 100.3. So now we have a point that's on the northwest corner of our project and we have a point at the southeast corner. Does that 100.3 appear on this plan? Uh, it doesn't. It, it appears on my sketch, but I got that information from... Um, it is also, I believe, in the affidavit. But it comes from Owen Haskell, that information. And you want me to... Paragraph 16. All right, Skip Murray, uh, paragraph 16. Uh, doesn't really give you an elevation there, though. Move nine feet. No. Um, there is an. Anyway, we, we do have that. It's information from Owen Haskell. Okay? That I have. I'm sorry. If I may, Alan Brewer shot the ele ele elevation, Mr. Galino, the, the inf information that she relied on when she came to the site with me, Skip Murray, Dana uh, Sterling, and what he, he was stating, what he's stating in the affidavit is that he identified the tree as the high point. There was a high point on the northwesterly corner, in fact, a hill, and that had to be taken down. And the other parts of the affidavit speak to that issue. That is that they had to take down the hill in order to move the cottage off. What, El what, what Johan was stating was that Ellen took uh, the measurement to come up with, um, oh, she shot the line. She shot the line, but I don't see anywhere. What's the elevation you're referring to the stump being at? 100 what? Uh, 100.3, and that's at the northwest corner that she shot into play. Now, I, I, I think I found some information. I can, I, we can back up her elevation with what Murray has. Um, item number 10 on the Murray affidavit speaks to uh, about 24 inches was his recollection of a cut at that corner. All right. So you're taking and adding that 24 in inches to the northwesterly That's correct. elevation on this plan? Uh, on this right here, we worked through this elevation. We established an elevation at the <clears throat> bottom of that footing of 98.24. And that's working down through this map. OK. When we add that, that claim of 24 inches is supported somewhat by going, you talked about opposite corners, 98.22 to 103. That's two feet difference. Is that, am I, is that correct? Yes. Well, I, I believe I understand. Let me just go through it again. You, we talked about op, opposite corners earlier, and we started off, we left one corner at 98.22, and where you go to the stump, you're at 100.3, which is roughly two feet difference. Am I correct in assuming that that supports um, Mr. Murray's? Um, Paragraph 10, in his affidavit, paragraph 10? Yes, basically. I think you're quoting the bottom of that, of the footing was at 98.24. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you add two feet to that, if that's what he observed, that basically gets you up to the 100.3, which is also what Ellen had. So those two corroborate because... It supports it. Exactly, exactly. So I'm just trying to look at the data that's presented to me 
and come up with my opinion of what I feel original grade is. And that stump was removed, I take it? Was this no, the, no, the stump is still there. I observed that here today. So that's still original grade at that point where the stump is? The stump, excuse me? The bottom of the stump, obviously, yes. is still original grade. Yes. And, is, and so I take it on this plan, is it outside or inside of the data points that he took? Um, I don't know exactly where that would plot up in here. I didn't take any measurements from there to the foundation. So. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, 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 that's okay. So anyway, now we have a so point. Be before oh. you leave that, the, sure. you also stated that, that Owen Haskell's information supports what you just stated or not? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, no, so far I'm not diverting from any of their data. I think, I think the points that they shot in the field are correct, okay? I think the information also from the affidavits, why well, I have to believe that's correct. And the, the two sort of do, uh, do derive, so they do cooperate each other, okay? What I'm just looking at is, is how you then take that data and, and, and come up with an answer of original grade is what we're all looking for, okay? So pre-construction grades. So now we have a point basically at the, the south uh, west corner, uh, I'm sorry, at the northwest corner and at the southeast corner. So we've established two opposite elevations there, okay? If you take those two elevations, which is this, um, this three inches above the footing, okay, uh, 99.16, and you take that 100.3, which also was within uh, less than an inch then of the uh, affidavit. You add those two together, divide by two, sort of sort of what they, their methodology was here. You're just taking two numbers, adding them, dividing by two. That number, and I just worked it out a, a little bit ago, um, ends up to be about 99.73. If you subtract that from the elevation of this midpoint, which is this whole discussion here, get you about an inch less than 35 feet. So that's a change from what I understood we were coming in here tonight to review. As I understood the request, um, and Mr. Bulger, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought the Exhibit A to the um, administrative appeal indicated that at least when you were drafting this up, you thought you were seven inches high. No, well, we were uncertain because we didn't have the data, all of the data completed. We knew that, uh, given the Owen Haskell calculation, that at the southeast corner, we would have to have a five-foot foundation in order for, us to, for their, their complete calculation to make sense. So we knew something was seriously wrong. The interpretation appeal generally states that we have two feet higher at the <coughs> westerly corner running down gradient in an easterly direction. And, and therefore, we, what we have is either a de minimis violation or no violation at all, but no specific inter, uh, uh, calculation of the amount. What we're asking for is an interpretation that this is a, a reasonable method, methodology to determine building height that is taking the Owen Haskell data but adding uh, testing it and adding um, uh, additional uh, factual findings, best evidence, mm -hmm. that is the foundation evidence uh, from, from uh, Mr. Sterling and the, uh, uh, the cut uh, performed by the excavation contractor and his specific recollection as to how deep his cut was on the easterly side and how deep his cut was on the westerly side. Uh, but also improving upon that because as Johan is pointing out, that there are certain things that are comp make compelling logic. And so, um, in answer to your question, I wasn't sure whether we had a de minimis violation or no violation at all. And um, Johan has been working on this, as had the other parties, but I needed to come up with the factual information first. We knew that, that the finding was incorrect but we didn't know specifically what that measurement would be. Because since you drafted this, you received additional data. That's correct. Thank you.
According to the site plan from Owen Haskell, it doesn't appear that they reference the stump. Is that, was that just recently revealed? Has anyone queried them as to why they would not have used a um, You probably can speak further to that. When we were on site with Alan Brewer from Owen Haskell, and this was uh, about a week ago, when we were on site with Alan Brewer and I had the excavation contractor and the foundation contractor there, Skip Murray said, she, he was asked specifically how high was the hill at that northwest corner that he was asked to take down. And he said, I can't be certain. However, the best fixed point would be the stump, where, which is still there, and it was. And so she said, well, that makes sense to me. Let's shoot the elevation from there. It's nine feet off. It was nine or ten feet off the corner of the garage, which was where uh, their uh, site plan shows their measurement. So it was equidistant to where uh, Owen Haskell had taken their measurement. It was in a slightly different direction running northwesterly as opposed to almost due north, as shown on the plan. It's not, it's, it's not due north, it's still northwest. But it's, it's at that corner of the garage on the northerly side closest to Shipwreck Cove Road. Coming in. So was it Murray's position that that bottom of that stump was at original grade for the edge of the northwest that's, corner of the building? That's correct. He said that was best evidence of original grade. <clears throat> and I don't, see, unfortunately, I don't see anything in your papers where Haskell verifies the grade of that stump. Well, Ellen Brewer, I was there. Ellen Brewer did uh, shot it, and uh, Mr. Friedman, who also does survey work was there and verified um, the elevation shot. Well, I was there and he did. <laughs> it's just a point of clarification. The, the hill was actually closer to the building and it was also more immediately behind the existing cottage lot. So when you pull the cottage straight back, it's not, uh, actually that hill would have been higher than where that stump was. The stump is actually further to the north and is a, <clears throat> the, probably the lowest point at that high point. However, what Skip Murray was doing was making the very best fixed point that he could to say, well, we took that hill out at that location. Uh, Paul, just to quit, Johan's the uh, professional on this, but yeah. why, why would a survey company not reference that at this point? I mean, what, what would be the methodology? I mean, I, I, uh, Jim, I could speak to that. Um, they were given the OST Associates letter, and the OST Associates had 12 data points on it. It involved a 12-sided structure they were told to follow that methodology because that was reasonable interpretation. I think Mr. Smith's approach on that is a fair one, given that we don't measure these building heights in the town of Cape Elizabeth that often. Um, and this is a non-commercial property. Uh, it just so happens, as I explained earlier, that uh, that methodology works quite fine if you've got a topographic map, but if you look at the logic of what they did, falling off the southerly side and falling off the easterly side or northerly side by 10 or 20 feet puts you in much lower than the grade for, um, for the site. So um, Johan is trying to address the deficiencies, but that are not the fault of Owen Haskell and not the fault of of OST Associates, but that this site is different than OST, and it's also different than the town center lot, the medical center building lot <coughs> that was referred to, where they had a topographical map. Everybody, everybody who's been to the site has said the same thing, and that is, this site's disturbed. You know, we're going to get back to original grade. How are we going to do that? And that was the reaction that John Swan at Owen Haskell had. Um, John would be here to explain it tonight. By the way, he's on a boat, bringing a boat from the Caribbean to Portland, and uh, we can't even get a hold of him by cell phone. I wanted to uh, 
one at the end here. Um, I just had a, a couple questions for your expert, if we could. Yes. I'm sorry if you could bear with me. I'm a total novice at this stuff, so some of these questions may sound a little foolish, but um, maybe you could help me out. Sure. Yes, I assume you're familiar with the zoning ordinances in many towns. That's correct, yes. And I, t I take it, th is this a typical way to do it from original, um, original grade to measure the height of the building? Um, well, not necessarily. We only got involved with another project here, and it was sort of similar to this, where someone wanted to add to an existing structure. I know this, I'm going back to my memory, this has got to be five to six, seven years ago. And we had to get, and, 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 and the grade wasn't flat, it was a step down foundation. I know at the time we got some uh, information, and then we were asked, I don't know uh, who was at the, here at the town, but we had to get some additional information, and we sort of just work through that project together to come up with what we thought was the average grade for them to put this this uh, addition on. Before, before you before you cut ground, before you broke ground. Yes, yeah. This was an existing structure, and they just wanted to, I think, add a floor or something to it. Um, right now, we're doing four of these uh, residential properties in the city of Portland, where you have to provide a topo first, and and that way you do have the grades and everything as established ahead of time. Now we look at that for both the building height and for drainage issues onto abutters and things like that. So in the city of Portland, uh, we're doing four of those projects, and all of them do require topo. Okay. On, uh, at the very beginning. Of the and what's typical, what, what is the typical protocol in a situation where a topographical map is not required with a building permit? How do people verify in the typical case what the original grade was? Hmm. Is it typical for them to do that before they start construction, take photographs? I would say it's typical to do it that beforehand. We're doing, and I'm just thinking of all the different projects we're doing right now. We're doing one in Yarmouth. Uh, right on the ocean, and also we, it was an existing ranch. Again, this is an existing building, but what we did on there is they measure um, by volume and by uh, square footage. So we had to look at those two issues. So we went out there before anything was disturbed during the site plan process, and we got the volume of the building, the height of the building, the peak of the building, also the square footage. We also, in that particular case, it doesn't apply, but we also, they needed to know what the drip line measurements was, how much open space is clear to the sky. So we did all that beforehand, before they went through the site permit process. And I assume if you do it beforehand, there's a way to, to sort of memorialize the original grade. Yes, there is. What we do is you're back to your uh, setting a reference point on site. Yeah, short of a full topogra topographical map, you can just identify the original grade. That's correct. Uh, on that one in Yarmouth, what we had to do is the DEP actually, for the setbacks, you have to go from the high water mark, which is established by the DEP at an elevation, I forget what it is, you know, 10.3 or something. So what we did is a small topo along the coast established exactly where that elevation was, and then from that point we could measure the setback and say, okay, that's the property you've left that you can, uh, you can build upon. Yeah. And um, have you asked to find out if there was any photos of this cottage? I have looked at a, a, a prior, a, a prior to construction, of course. Uh, there's one photograph I looked at um, earlier today, um, and it, you know, it's 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 taken from an angle, so it's hard to get a lot of information out of it. But it really does look like the property drops off to some toward because what there was is on the southerly side there was a fence, and you can see that fence very clearly. And, and it looks like there, it does drop off. Now, how much, it's, it's really hard to ascertain, you know. I do have some photos that, that were supplied to me by a neighbor. I only have one set, but the neighbor I talked to today uh, is Penny Pollard, uh, who has copies for the board. Uh, so I didn't copy again. Uh, it shows the cottage before it was moved and after it was moved. Um, so you will be receiving them, I assume. Yeah. Would you like to see the photos now? I'll take it in the normal course. Okay. I, if I may just comment on the photographs. Um, the photos are a good shot of where the building footprint was from a height, which clearly shows that the property drops off at either side. Um, what it is not a good shot of is 
where the foundation is now, which is set back, not entirely, completely out of the original footprint, but a good portion, probably 75% of the uh, new foundation is not shown in the photographs, unfortunately. So. Because the, the footprint of that original building was much smaller? That's correct. Where would the cottage have uh, fallen within the site plan? Would it be forward to the? It was forward of the structure. That's forward of the structure. Yeah, closer to the ocean. Okay. That's correct. I mean, and just in closing, I, I mean, obviously, I, I'm, I, I've been hired here, but as a professional opinion, I've looked at all the data because I deal with data all the time, and it's, it's always my license that's on the line. I mean, I sign for everything, and so I'm very protective of that license, in my opinion, and, and we're a business, have been here in Scarborough for 13 years or whatever, so I really feel that we may not have precisely come up with the original grade, but it's, it's the better of the two methods. I think using the data and looking at the extra data that Owen Haskell didn't have, I really feel that we've come up to a better um, um, estimate, if you want to call it that, of where original grade was. I'm assuming, though, that in making your uh, opinion, you're assuming the accuracy of the recollections of the excavator, correct? That's correct. I have to rely on all the data. I mean, we were involved in one other court case um, where about the quantity of fill that was put on the site. And again, I was presented with a lot of data, you know, was a, um, uh, that I had to sort of sift through and sort of weigh in my own mind, how good is that? What was, the, uh, what was that data really used for, you know? And, and you, you come up with a professional opinion sorting through all that data and um, and are you rely are you taking into account the photographs of the property as well or are you just uh, disregarding uh, them no I, I i did i looked at that photograph earlier and and to my mind um, um having positive drainage away from the structure makes sense i mean we all have it on all our homes the question is how much you know what was the, the lay of the land like but um um, it does afford positive drainage away from the structure, which makes sense. And then right near the property lines is where the drainages would have naturally been uh, down towards the ocean, which also is it, one of those common sense things. So it makes sense to me. And then to see this data here, again, that it rises here in the middle based on that affidavit information, again, seems to make sense with that photograph. Do you believe the photographs are in conformity with your opinion? Yes, I do. You got a question? Sure. How many points did we actually use in your method? Um, I used the how oh, I used the um, the affidavit. The affidavit calls for elevations at three points. We didn't discuss one other corner, um, and that's um, item number eleven in the affidavit of Murray. Uh, he also observes at the southwest corner, we've talked about the southeast and northwest, at the southwest corner, approximately 12 inches. Again, if you take the 12 inches and you come up with this elevation, I mean, if you take, if you only look at item number 10 and 12, all right, what he observed, you come up with two grades on that. And again, you take the average of those two particular grades without this other information that we've talked about, the stump and the southeast corner, you add that, you come up with an average, you subtract that, you're within about an inch of the other elevation that I came up with. Okay, and that was about uh, 34.9. So those two are very close and those are independent of each other. So, so I'm many, sorry, so, so I, how many points? So uh, we used an uh, elevation at the southwest corner, uh, uh, two different elevations at the northwest corner, and one elevation at the south east corner and that's of the the 50 by 54 what the main structure or without the garage um that would be well when he when they talk about the southwest corner and the northwest corner of the site so i'm i'm, I'm using that as the main structure i'm assuming well northwest corner it's, could be that or the garage So using those four points that you just spoke of, plus the calculation for the roof, um, the mean level, what did you arrive at for the building's height? Um, 
the difference between, because we're looking at that difference in elevation, the way I established this elevation here, this midpoint, is I simply took uh, Owen Haskell's 103.2, which they shot the top of the concrete, and simply from the plan added, uh, the plan calls for uh, 31, 5, and 11 sixteenths. All right, so I took that information, I think I showed that on my sketch, I converted it to decimals, but it's 3147. I added that to the 103.2, established a design elevation um, from that. Then I simply subtracted my grade, and when you subtract the two, the design elevation up here, and the grade that I came up with in here, I came up with 34.9. A tenth of an inch. <laughs> no, and, and, and you know, everyone will believe what they would like to believe, but I just crunch numbers seriously, and uh, and now you can believe what you like. Truly, truly, and this is really, in all honesty, for everybody. You may think whatever, but unless he pays me a million dollars and I can afford to lose my license on, on this one particular job, I will not risk my license. I'm licensed in three states. So I won't risk my license on any one particular job. Again, maybe a million dollars. I, I consider it. You know, Go for a million dollars. <laughs> Ten million? I don't know. Where do you draw a line? But seriously, um, I really feel it's a, it, it is a good <clears throat> professional judgment. And, and certainly not to impugn your, your reputation. I fully understand how much you would value it. But it just, I guess it just gets, it's surprising that coming that close, that before beginning a construction project that significant, that they didn't take points prior to disturbing them. Well, I guess it's, yeah, it would have been nice it had been that been really required good. as part of the site plan submittal, actually. They weren't required to do that. And, 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 and it's by luck that we probably come up with these numbers, um, you know, is that, that it does make it. I mean, I certainly could have told Paul uh, and say, look, it's, it's four inches over, six inches over. You know, I, I just relate the data. But it, it came up, and I know it sounds funny, but it's really the data I did come oh, up yes, with. Yes, and once again, certainly not to impugn your, your reputation. It's obvious that you've done some fine work, but it goes back to the general contractor or whoever first begin this project to not fully identify what the original conditions were. Yeah, I, and I don't know if he's, the best thing is to do is to require people to do that because if they're not required, uh, I mean, if, if there, it would have been nice on the plans had this plan when it was submitted to actually have grades out there and have a benchmark on site and have someone just run through, when we do condo conversions, which are getting really popular right now, one of the things we have to do is come up with elevations on each floor. Uh, and that's a standard procedure that we do in our office. I guess I'm a little confused about the, this aspect of the zoning ordinance, and I'd appreciate an answer either from you or from Mr. Smith, but that is, if I understand the concept here, uh, we could continue to increase the height of our building so long as we continue to dig a deeper hole, if I understand what you're telling me. In other words, if we keep removing grade, we can keep going down as far as we want. What's the limit on the degree to which you can keep removing grade uh, and increasing the height of your building? Because as I understand, everything's measured from the original grade it, before you disturb the soil. Yeah, it's set. I mean, you can't... If you set the original grade, then that's, that's it. That's all you get. But I'm confused because, as I understand what we're arguing here, is that by removing grade from the original grade, we basically get to enjoy a taller building. Am I wrong? Am I misunderstanding uh, that? I think you misunderstand. I'm sorry? I think you misunderstand. Uh, yeah. The, 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 the yeah. total over. The, the, the point about... Uh, uh, Mr. Galino's good question. The point about the three inches and the 24 inches is that the footings were, uh, as established by Dana Sterling, were three, at the top of the footings, his affidavit says, on the easterly side, my footing was three inch below original grade. So when, we're not saying we dug deeper, we're just using that as a reference point right. then. And on the opposite side, to, we're, we're actually establishing original grade by reference to where the footing was 
relative to that grade. We're saying this guy got down there in the dirt and set it. So he knows where he was relative to original grade. But original grade is everything because it's the only variable in this, in this, uh, this whole equation. So you would agree with me that my analysis is correct, that you, as long as you remove grade, uh, the, what you're doing is you, you get the maximum height, depending upon the zone you're in, you take the original grade, you get 30 or 35 feet above that, 35 feet in this case above yes. it. Yes. And if you happen to reduce the grade by two feet, you get to enjoy that extra two feet of building height. Yeah, in this case, I would, I would just make the observation. If you, if you went down more than the four feet or so that we're talking about, the topsoil, we would hit ledge. And then we talk about blasting, and then we talk about you know, how much you can enjoy your uh, property below gradient. So that's really, the, I think, the economics and the... So is the answer that there is no other limitation in the zoning ordinance from just that issue? In other words, that you can increase the height of your building and therefore the volume of the building by reducing the grade, and the only limits is the practical ones of ledge and water and aesthetics? That's correct. I can't imagine somebody wanting to increase the grade by down, but that's correct. I, I just would like to clarify the fact that I did look at the elevations for review for the building permit. I saw original grade. I guess I made the assumption that because they established original grade on the plan that there would probably be an established benchmark. Um, I was wrong on that. And that was uh, something that you normally on these bigger projects, especially when you have a 35 foot height that you're pushing, uh, generally speaking, the general contractor will, will establish a benchmark and, and the foundation goes in accordingly. So that, that, that's an assumption that I made because of the extent of the project and, and the fact that it was pushing the 35 feet to begin with. Your assumption being that? The elevation, the, the elevation plans showed an original grade and showed the height of three feet above, so I assumed that the benchmark was on the face of the earth. I'd never go to the site and, and establish the benchmark for the applicant, that's something that's assumed. That's typical for them to do, right? Correct. If, if I may just add, this project was designed to be 34 feet, 6 inches. And so, given the testimony from Johan Wiesman, he actually, the, uh, the way he came out the, the, as a project, he came within <coughs> 4 inches of that. The OST Associates letter talks about uh, an allowable variation of a third of a foot, and the Owen Haskell letter talks about an allowable variation of six inches. So if you look at it from that perspective, and the original project being 34 feet, six inches in height, with that much variation, we actually could be seven inches below the 35 foot standard. That's not the point, the point is that this is not, it's, it's mostly science, but it's not all science. It's still a difficult determination. Was the original plan to have a building that was 35 feet tall? 34 feet, 6 inches. This is a 3 and foot. As built, is it 34 feet, 6 inches, or is the foundation tall? Uh, the foundation height is the same, but it varies relative to what is grade at various points on the site. So how, that, that's the problem. We have, a, we have a cross section here that shows a three foot foundation as designed. Well, it's the average foundation, but not everywhere is it, the foundation gonna be three feet. And then how do you go about calculating what that foundation height really is relative to original grade? The grade is all over the place. So that, that really frames. What's the maximum height on the, on the foundation? I don't know that. Is there a, ma Mr. Smith, you know, if there's a maximum height for a foundation? No, not for a foundation, this foundation that's in the ground. So we, we know it's, it's 48 inches. It's a 48 inch foundation. Yeah. Eight inch. Thank you. Any other questions? No, I think I'm, I don't have any more presenters here. Any other questions? Yes. I do. Um, sure. If you made the same calculations upon the affidavit of Mr. Murray, and you went by his recollection of 24 inches, if you did the same calculations, say, with 6 inches or 12 inches versus adding 6 inches either way, 
what kind of numbers do you get? If we were to change, you say from the app, just so I understand your question, yeah. if we were to change what they recall by six inches. Yeah. In other words, I guess I'm looking at three data points, and I think people, you're doing a fine job with the science and numbers, but some of the numbers we're making assumptions from by other people's recollection from three different points. Okay. And I'm saying just by error, error alone, chance, if everything right. is right on, the numbers come out okay. But I think my way of looking at it is that there are several variables. Also, there's variables, not to talk about anyone's reputation, but just the recollection. And, and if we worked out, uh, you know, a range of numbers, oh, okay, do, do, is everything still right under the under the ceiling? I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, no, I actually didn't go through that exercise. But I always look at quality of data. I mean, again, in the office, when our crews go out, we shoot things twice. There's there's certain things we do within the office to verify some data. In this case. I'm just looking at the, the northwest corner. It's the only corner I can do it where I have two different sets of data. One is Ellen, and one is um, the recollection. And they're both very close. At the other corners, you're, you're correct. I don't have anything. At, I just go by logic that at that southeast corner, we know that three inches seems about appropriate if you're going to take a foot of topsoil off. Okay, so that seems to make sense. I don't imagine it would be a much less than that. They wouldn't have set this right on grade. So could that be three inches be off? It could be, I don't know, but it seems to make sense to me. The only real question I have is that the southwest corner, it talks about a cut of 12 inches. There's nothing there. It could be 12, it could have only been three, could have been 18. <clears throat> I don't know about the southwest corner. So that's the one that's most uh, questionable. Thank you. Yes. Could I ask when the, what the dates when the, the foundation was dug and the cement was poured in terms of when this affidavit was signed by these two individuals. What's the timeline here? Is it four weeks? Uh, Dana finished his work April 29th, and <coughs> he didn't know about a violation until two weeks ago. So there was a fact finding, basically called these guys to the site and said, okay, mm -hmm. you know, what's the story here? Um, those affidavits were prepared by my office submitted to them, and they made a whole bunch of changes on it. Those reflect their statements. Um, I did my best from what they said to me, and obviously um, they thought they could do better, but th that's, those are, that's straight from Mr. Murray and Mr. Sterling. Um, Mr. Bolger, uh, I think it was you that indicated that, that Mr. Swan is in the, uh, Somewhere in the Caribbean or the... Well, I, I think he's probably in Virginia by now. I'm not sure. Um, has there been... I'm, I'm still sort of wrestling again, like my colleague, Mr. Galino here. I'm a, I'm a real novice when it comes to uh, matters of survey. And, and I'm, still, I'm still wrestling with um, the... Um, the opinion of, of Owen Haskell, uh, which was uh, obtained by your client, I believe, or, or by you at your, at, at your request, certainly at the applicant's request. Yeah, actually, Mr. Smith requested, <coughs> said, I I'm going to have to stop work unless I have some additional information. And as I understand it, I, and, uh, Bruce, if, if you can verify this, as I understand it, at that point, Mr. Friedman said, sure, I'm pretty confident of what we've done, uh, brought Owen Haskell, uh, called Owen Haskell in, but Owen Haskell was instructed to follow the OST method. Uh, they were not free to employ any method they wanted for determining original grade. What they said was, we don't know, we, we, we can't be certain of it. If, if, very simply put, if you look at what they did, just as Johan said, they took, if we take, take the original uh, or the foundation site, they went off this, the side, which is down slope in each instance, and they took their data from these points. Um, 
they actually took a lot more data, but they threw a lot of stuff out, and then they took these four points and they averaged them to come up with the 98.28, I think, or 48 average. In any case, they were very clear with me that this is not original grade. It's an interpolation. It's um, going to the site and following a certain method to try to determine original grade. But, and I know the chairman was out there this morning. I did not talk to you other than to say hello. But I know that when you were there, you can see that there's so much dirt removed from the hole and pushed to the side that finding out where, where the ground originally started and, and where the new dirt starts, it's just an impossible thing. Has there been any, has there been any discussion with, with any representative from Owen Haskell um, um, since um, Jan did his, uh, did his analysis? Uh, not since Johan did his analysis. What, what Ellen told me was that she was not authorized to <coughs> supplement the information that she had get, been given unless she had spoken to John Swan, and even then she couldn't make any representation on it. What she said emphatically was, the best evidence of original grade can be taken from the excavation man and the foundation guy. And she also had the foundation guy there, or the excavate, excuse me, Skip Murray was there and told her that the tree trunk was on that corner where he had taken down the hill, where she was not present on site when that work was done. That was, that's going to the earlier question. Owen Haskell was not there, and they had no specific recollection of how high grade was at that point. It was Skip Murray who said, that's the best evidence as to high grade, how high grade was. So what she was saying is, we've got some educated guesswork here. We can use some industry standards, but best evidence is something else. You need to get some statements from these gentlemen because they were there and they know. When, it, when that hole was cut, they know how far they cut, they know how, where the footings were relative to original grade, and that's the only, I mean, it was at her recommendation that we sought the information. Well, well I, 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 I don't want to put you in a difficult position of speaking for, um, for Owen Haskell, but if, if they were retained for a specific purpose of determining grade, and their representative is telling you that the best evidence of the original grade is certain practical information to be obtained from excavation contractors and foundation contractors. Why do you suppose that, that they did not obtain that information themselves? Function of practicality and timing at that moment. What you have is a kiln-dried structure with several hundred thousand dollars investment exposed to the elements. And what they were doing was, Owen Haskell was doing, is going out and getting something. If you read the Owen Haskell letter, what it says is, well, maybe this and maybe that, and also there's a variation of up to six inches in our finding using our data points and using the Oast Associates method. It's, it's not crystal clear, they're not saying this is average original grade, they're saying this is average original grade with great variation or substantial variation, not great, substantial variation from what we're trying to measure because this is the best we can do. On the other hand, the hope was, frankly, that in getting that information in as quickly as possible that the stop work order would be lifted because we were within um, I think, what was the language that Oast Associates used? <coughs> the 1998 letter of Oast Associates talking about um, this town center lot, um, they get to the end of their letter and they state, we, we, we also tried three other methods to calculate the average existing grade and found that these methods yeah. all checked out within three-tenths of a foot. So even then, with a topographical map and with known uh, determined fixed uh, uh, foundation walls, they're saying they still have a variation 
in their calculations by up to a third of a foot. And we don't have the benefit of a topographical map. I mean, it sort of begs the question. It's a cat chasing its tail. But the, the bottom line is we only have one variable here, average original grade and, how, and, the, and the method about by which to go about determining. They also said they tried three other methods to calculate existing grade and found that these methods all checked within 3.3. So yes. that sounds like probably as close as you can get with any, no matter what method you use, correct? They call that an acceptable tolerance. That was the word I was looking for. Um, what I, I, if I could speak for Mr. Friedman on this, I think his thinking was that if he submitted that material and Owen Haskell was saying there may be a violation of 14 inches with a six inch variation, that Mr. Smith might find that acceptable to lift the stop work order given a variance uh, or the uh, uh, acceptable tolerance um, as permitted by uh, uh, engineers and surveyors previously, but and knowing that we don't have the benefit of the topographical map here. Now, you know, we can fall on our sword and say we'd like to have one. I, you know, in 20 years in the business, I very seldom, when I'm unless I'm doing a subdivision application, do I have a topographical map. And why do I have it in that instance? Because the town requires it. This is not a commercial project. <coughs> And I don't mean to belabor that point, but I, it's, it's unfortunately true. It's, the ordinance doesn't require it. And um, looking at this and what we've been through with uh, a structure to midpoint, measured to midpoint, 34 and feet 6 inches, designed to be 34 6 inches to the midpoint, um, you know, I, I would say I, I would recommend it to a client uh, in the future. But it's... I don't have it, and then uh, this is done. Mr. Friedman, on the other hand, the point is that, that, that I wanted to make about hiring Owen Haskell and approaching the Shoreland Zoning Ordinance and the space and bulk reg regulations so carefully, even before he bought, is not a scoff law, and he didn't intend in any way to violate um, the restrictions for height in the ordinance. It is a tall structure. Mr. Bulger, just one question. Um, how much larger is the floor plan of this building than the old, to the old plan? Oh, Approximately. I have no idea. Um, it's, 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 a, it's 54 by 48 uh, on three floors. I think it's a total of 7,800 square feet. The prior cottage is probably, uh, and if I had to hazard a guess, it's under 1,200 square feet total. And so it was just as far as the footprint on the face of the earth, we're talking like 20, that old building was 25% of this area approximately? Yeah, I would say 30 by 40 versus you know, uh, 50 by 48, 54 by 48. Okay. Thank you. In the paragraph, the paragraph you cited in the letter from OS Associates, um, 0.3 feet, is it your assertion that the ordinance should be, have a, to a tolerance within it? No. The, is that what you Mr. were saying? Mr. Smith is entitled to, to or on behalf of the town, to make a reasonable interpretation of the ordinance. The ordinance in this case says 35 feet height. It doesn't say 35 feet from original grade. It doesn't say 35 feet from, feet from the grade after construction. It doesn't, it doesn't say 35 feet with grade measured from the perimeter outline of the property. It doesn't tell us. What we have is the town has adopted a reasonable interpretation of its ordinance um, under circumstances involving a commercial property with a topographical map. Uh, I guess what I was getting at in that paragraph, in that point three feet um, that Oaks Associates talking about, is they're saying that they arrived at an original uh, their conclusion, and then they double or triple checked the conclusion, and they arrived at point three. They're, they're stating that that cross-checks with their original findings, not that the ordinance, or they're not implying that there is a acceptable tolerance to the ordinance. Oh, no. Because that, that's how I understood you to present it earlier, and I don't think that that's correct. Well, um, I think what, well, I, I'm, I, I frankly read it just the opposite, that one-third of a foot 
would be an acceptable tolerance to interpret height um, as to whether you add that third of a foot and then test it or subtract it or use the mean. I, you know, I, I don't have an opinion about that because they don't, they don't do this thing. Yeah, I guess I, it, I don't read it. I don't draw the same conclusion from that paragraph that you do. Is that they are reiterating that they can't arrive at a conclusion based on their calculations, and they use the same data using different methods, and arrived at four different conclusions, but they're all 0 0.3 within each other. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that that actually speaks to how the the, the um, ordinance is supposed to be interpreted. And I think you reached for that conclusion. Um, I, you know, I don't, I'd, I'd have to ask Mr. Ost, I guess, is me, be my answer, or Mr. Smith, for that matter. Mr. Bulger, could you give me those numbers again on the size of this building versus the old building, the footprint? Um, the footprint is 54 by 48. On the new building? Um, new building. Yeah. I've been in the old cottage, and I can't be, sh I'm using a 1,200 square foot. It might be 900 square feet, which would be 45 by 20. Yeah. 45 by, by 20. Any other uh, questions of Mr. Bolger or the board? I guess one last question I would have is that 100.3 that Jim Murray pointed out, or Skip Murray pointed out, it I guess I'm still not sure. I, I don't believe that Owen Haskell used it in their site plan. And is, were you aware of that before they this evening? They did not use it in their site plan. That number was derived earlier this week. Mm -hmm. Again, based upon Skip Murray stating that that would be a reference point to determine grade at, original grade at that corner. Did you have a chance to talk to the folks at Owen Haskell once? I don't, well, once that information, or we, no, Je well, it'd be nice to know how Owen, Owen Haskell, especially since they were a participant in a conversation where Skip pointed that out, that it didn't get into their calculations. Well, John, neither John Schwanda or John Swan, the principals at Owen Haskell, are available this week. Um, Ellen Brewer, who did the calculations and submitted them to Bruce on behalf of Owen Haskell. Participated in these discussions. She understood what, what, the, calcula what the, um, the, the elevation would be. In fact, she's the one who measured it. Um, she agreed that that would be the best measure of that northwest corner. Um, and but then she later failed to use it in her calculation? Oh, oh no, she didn't. No, she said that it should be incorporated into the calculation, but she didn't authorize me to do so. <clears throat> I don't think I fully understand that answer. Uh, my, my name is Drew Friedman. Uh, I'm, I suspect I can clarify that point. When Skip Murray was originally uh, preparing the land to move the cottage so that Jim Mary could move the cottage to the rear of the property long before Haskell did anything except the site survey showing the location of the cottage and the boundaries. When Jim went to move the cottage to the rear of the property, uh, he, he couldn't. I guess because of his beams that extend beyond the, uh, the cottage, we're going to hit this hill. So he asked Skip Murray to remove that hill so he could move the cottage to the rear. We just learned this at this recent meeting with Skip Murray when we were looking over the land and trying to understand what the original conditions were. So he cut it down. And we said to him, how high was it? And he said it was about the same as at the base of that tr trunk that was cut off. So that's how we were able to establish that that was the height or the elevation of the land at that corner of the property, but he cut it down. So Owen Haskell, nobody knew about it. I didn't know about it until I spoke to him um, because I wasn't there and I wasn't familiar that, that familiar with the grade. And also it was, there was a 
clump of trees where the mound or the hill was, so it wasn't very visible either. Sorry, not to belabor the point, but I just, I, I hadn't really seen the results of, of, of Owen Haskell, okay? But I just did a, a rough calculation, and, and basically we know the elevation up here, the design grade, that's, that's basically taking the floor and adding the 31, 5, and, and 11 sixteenths number in there. If you take that elevation, which is uh, 134.67, and you subtract 35 feet, and then you subtract additional 14 inches, and that's basically the elevation that Owen Haskell is saying if we're in violation of 14 inches, all right? So you take the, the 134.67 up here, you subtract the 35, you subtract the 14, that sort of tells me what their elevation is, is that what they're coming up with, if there is a 14 inch uh, violation. That elevation I came up with is 98.5, which is below the top of the, the bottom of the wall. It's, it's mid-level of the footing. That means from the bottom of the footing, I'm just looking at my numbers, from the bottom of the footing up to where they come up with that elevation would be about a two inch cut. So basically, the contractor would have just, on average then, cut two inches, all right, and said that's where you're starting your, your footing. And uh, from, the, uh, from all this information that's been presented, uh, from the affidavits, there was more than a two inch cut on that site. And they could have been off, you know, you're right, they could have been off six inches. Um, I, I don't know if they were or not, but I don't think they were off that much to where there would have been only a two inch cut. See, I'm just working those numbers backwards. So could there still have been some sort of violation? Yeah, I don't know, but I'm just working that 14 inches as a number, working it backwards, which I hadn't done before. So I, I believe they would have cut more than two inches on preparing that site. You take more of that topsoil off, otherwise you wouldn't, excuse me, you wouldn't have a, a stable uh, footing at all. You know, especially for a, a, a dwelling of this size and the weight of this dwelling, I mean, I, I think the contractor would well want to make sure that he is on a good footing, on a good solid ground. Mr. Bolger, do either you or any, or the applicant, uh, have any other testimony? Do you have any other witnesses that you'd like to present? Um, Mr. Chairman, I don't believe so. With, of course, we would answer any additional questions that you have. I would like to be able to respond to comments. You'll, you'll, be, okay. you'll, be, you'll be given that opportunity. Bruce, um, having heard from, from Mr. Bolger, Mr. Friedman, and, and, and uh, um, is it Mr. Bushman? Mr. Buseman, yes. Buseman, I'm sorry. <laughs> Apologize. Um, is there anything that you'd like to uh, to say in rebuttal to, to anything that you've heard? It's just that uh, um, the Owen has, I mean, the host associates, uh, I think can be done, whether it's TOEFL or not, um, as long as you do it before things are disturbed. I think it's a, it's a method that can, can work. Um, other than that, I, I don't have anything at this point. Okay, we're going we're gonna to throw this open for public uh, comment, and uh, I suspect by uh, uh, those of you who are leaning forward in your seats, uh, uh, there will be a great deal of that, but if, uh, if no one minds, I think we'll take a five-minute break before we, uh, before we do that. Take their seats, please. Different group. Okay, 
Ladies and gentlemen, um, as always, this board appreciates the public concern and your willingness to turn out and support the, um, these meetings. Uh, this is a matter that obviously has been uh, one of great controversy. Uh, it has received a great deal of publicity um, since my tenure on the board, which is not that long, but about a year and a half now. This is by far the largest turnout we've had. Um, but it is 9 o'clock, and while I appreciate that each of you probably has something that you would like to have uh, this board here, uh, and that there is a, much that you would like to say relative to this particular structure. Um, we're charged with dealing with the issues at hand, and the issue at hand is the appeal from a notice of violation and an order to correct, which our code enforcement officer has imposed upon the applicant. The subject matter as we have been discussing this evening, uh, with respect to that order to correct, is the height of this building. It has nothing to do with the size of the building. It has nothing to do with the, um, the juxtaposition of the building. Um, with respect to each of your homes, um, it is limited to that very narrow focus. So while I will be glad to allow each of you to speak your piece, we would very much appreciate your limiting your comments. Very much appreciate your limiting your comments to the issue at hand. Better yet, uh, if there are a few of you who may have been delegated as spokesmen by the others, we would appreciate um, only those individuals speaking. This is not by way of, of imposing any um, gag order on any of you. Um, we would just like to limit the amount of time that we're spending here with respect to this particular matter. Um, if, that being said, um, if, if uh, uh, anyone now wishes to come forward to the podium and speak, please feel free to do so. Excuse me, do, yes. do you have a set of these for uh, Mr. Friedman or his representative, Mr. I Bolger? I didn't do one for them, but they saw the photos at Bruce's office Let's and took copies. Yes. Do you want to? Do you have a set? Yeah, those are the same ones, and we can look on? Yeah, this is the same set. You have a set? They have a set. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you.
My name is Penny Pollard, and uh, I'd first like to represent myself as the president of the Peebles Cove Association, which is the abutting property to uh, Mr. Friedman's. Um, Carolyn Tucker, who is the owner of the land the, uh, on which there are 24 homes, uh, from and from whom we lease the land uh, has written a letter that she asked me to read tonight that I'll do first. Hey, can you just speak up? Yeah. Is there a way to just talk into it? Just talk into it? Okay. Um, this is from Carolyn Tucker. As the owner of the Peebles Cove property adjacent to the building project now in question, I would like to object to the excessive height. Peebles Point and Cove has been a summer colony since the 1800s when the U.S. Life Saving Service maintained a boathouse in the Cove at Long Point. Most of the summer cottages were built there in the early 1900s and much later, later converted to year-round homes. The great appeal to this property is the sense of belonging to the land, enjoying the shore woods and fields, as well as having a feeling of community spirit among the residents. As each and every one of these cottages expanded from a cottage to a year-round home, they had to conform to all rules, regulations, and codes enforced by the town of Cape Elizabeth. How unfair and extremely questionable it would be for one owner to have to conform while their next door neighbor does not. Aesthetically, of course, this building does not fit in, as did the one it replaced. And I understand there are no codes or regulations regarding this. However, it will completely block the ocean view of several point residents, as well as others from Shore Acres. And as we all found out in the recent tax assessment, ocean views are extremely valuable. Valuable not only to building owners, but to town tax assessors as well. By eliminating what view, and we're actually talking about five cottages who have completely lost their view, these people had, this building will negatively affect the value of my property as well as, as some of the Shore Acres property owners, Carolyn M. Tucker. Thank you. Next, I want to just represent myself. Uh, one thing I wanted to respond to, the original cottage, the Ingalls cottage that was moved, was approximately 600 square feet, slightly less. And the new home that replaces it is approximately 7,800 square feet. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to respond to is that from my measurements, the maximum height on the foundation that has been poured is 59 inches from grade. So if you stand on the original grade, and that's at the southeast corner, which I think they did establish was the highest corner. So um, when I first looked at the foundation that had been poured for this building, I had no reason to question its height but I was interested and curious and I took pictures. Rather, I continued to take pictures because I began taking pictures before the former Ingalls Cottage was pulled up into the cleared woods at the back of the new lot. In my pictures, you'll see that the new foundation stood significantly above grade. 
standing next to the southeast corner, as I just observed, the top of the sill came just under my nose, which is 59 inches, one inch shy of five feet. When the post and beam crew arrived and that same day assembled and raised the first two bents, and bents in post and beam refer to these, these frames, my curiosity turned to shock. That was a Thursday, May 27th. I went to the town office Friday morning, the 28th, and asked for a meeting with Bruce Smith. And the first available time Bruce had would be on Tuesday, June 1st, as Monday was Memorial Day. Construction did not continue on that Friday as it was raining very hard all day. However, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday of Memorial Day weekend, the next three of the five bents were constructed and raised, completing the edifice that now confronted the neighborhood. On Tuesday, as planned, Bruce Smith patiently went over the elevations for this construction with me. However, I insisted to him that regardless of what the drawings illustrated, the actual foundation was way too high. Bruce came down to the site that afternoon and concluded that the foundation was, from his calculation, at least 15 inches too high. He issued a stop work order and asked for a new survey. Owen N. Haskell, the original surveyor, arrived on Wednesday, June 2nd, remeasured the site and foundation. As it happened, I was home and witnessed the surveyor taking these new measurements. In the photographs, please note that the surveyor has the bottom of his measuring pole, I don't know what it's called, standing on top of the backfill around the outside of the foundation wall, not on the ground. The ground is quite clear in these photos, and what is new material that was trucked in and backfilled around the foundation walls is also quite clear. I question the data, which I have never seen, nor have I seen an elevation that illustrated the original grade of the site, which concludes that the original grade, the ground, was elevated three to three and a half feet. Elevated from where? Sea level? At the top of the driveway? Up at the back of the cleared lot in the woods? Regardless, the original site on which the former cottage stood was the ground, the original grade from which these elevations should have been drawn. Where is the elevation that shows what we can clearly see in these photographs? Does it exist? If it was never submitted, why was it never submitted? This is a fundamental element, and certainly with a building of this size in this location, a crucial element in determining whether or not this building would conform to code. My understanding is that the garage foundation for this site would have been underwater in a heavy spring rain or snow melt. And so the garage foundation was permitted to be built up to three feet, give or take six inches. Was it at this point that the entire foundation somehow got augmented to now stand approximately five feet above ground? <coughs> The post and beam bents measure to 41 feet from the top of the deck to the ridge. 41 feet from the top of the deck to the ridge. This is 41 feet. Not from down here. From here to here is 41 feet, actually. If you go down and you hang off the top of that ridge and you drop your tape measure to here, that's 41 feet. The mean level of the highest slope is 35 feet, right here. But the ground to the top of the ridge is approximately 46 feet. That's a lot closer to 50 feet than it is to 35 feet. This is an interpretation, not mine, but this is how the code is being interpreted. And this is the difference between what is now being perceived by neighbors as a three-story citadel versus what may have been a two-story home that no one would have taken issue with. In conclusion, I would like to request an independent survey be done to clarify the original grade of this building site. As it currently stands, it's as if someone drew a line in the air and said, begin the measurements for my 35 feet here. Thank you very much.
Ma'am? Yes. Mind if I ask you a question? Sure. Uh, when you say, how did you calculate, how did you determine your uh, calculations, the 35 feet and the 46 feet? How did I do that? When these bents were, before they were raised, when they were constructed, they were lying flat on the slab, and I measured them. You took a tape measure down there? I took tape. a tape measure. And and personally, you did it? I personally did it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. copies of those correspondence for the file. Good evening. My name's uh, Bill Greenberg. Uh, I'm an abutter uh, to Mr. Friedman's property. I own the building that's probably closest to his new home. Um, I had a prepared statement which I'm not going to read since most of the uh, information has already been um, covered. Uh, I'd like to second what Penny had to say and <clears throat> bring up two uh, important points, I think. The first is, we've heard a lot about calculations and data manipulation and uh, estimates and interpolation and so forth tonight, when I think we have the opportunity to go and, actual, and make actual measurements on the site. The, uh, the, um, the pictures that Penny has shows fairly clearly where original grade was and if you go to the site, you can see where the grass is still growing, and that's only a few feet from the actual foundation. There's also dirt that's been uh, excavated and distributed around the foundation, which is easily moved. We have uh, some um, uh, affidavits which talk about where the footing is with uh, relation to grade, and we could find out where the, uh, that is in reality and make measurements. You could also go back and, and um, corroborate uh, Penny's measurements and find out exactly how high this building truly is from original grade with, with measurements, and without estimations, without uh, interpolations, and without guesswork. That's my first point. My second point has to do with the wording um, that the, the focus has been almost completely then at this point, or this part of the building. And I believe if you look at the, uh, the, um, the zoning ordinance, uh, and if you look at the definition of, of building height, which has already been referenced this, uh, this evening, that there's a different interpretation of that wording than what's been done. The, the interpretation up till now has been that you start at this point and you measure it to this point, you, you divide that in half and that's the mean slope of your roof. The, the wording from the, uh, from the uh, ordinance actually says that it's the mean level of the highest slope of the roof. I've left out a couple words, but the, the key words are the mean level of the highest slope of the roof. To me, that means this is the highest slope of the roof. And its mean level is halfway from the peak to this point here. And that would increase the height of this building by some uh, seven feet. Uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, I believe seven feet. Uh, maybe four and a half. But anyway, this is about 10 feet as shown here, so that's an additional five feet, give or take. So I think that should be taken into consideration because I don't believe that that is a correct uh, interpretation of the wording of the ordinance. Um, beyond that, it's all been said uh, by Kathy Tucker, by, uh, by Penny, 
in terms of the impact of this of this building and while it's not an enforceable portion of the code i understand that there is the spirit of the code spirit of the law if you will and i think that this building violates that spirit it probably shouldn't have been issued a building permit in the first place thank you uh i can also leave you with a couple of pictures just to show you that impact thank you Is there anyone else who uh, would care to comment? Please. Uh, my name is Richard Baldwin. I live at uh, 15 Reef Road, which is within view of Mr. Friedman's new home. I'm, I'm sorry, sir, what was your last name? Richard Baldwin. Thank you. Um, I, I appreciate your giving me a moment to talk, and I want to apologize beforehand if I, I appear to be talking down to you. But what I would like to point out is in France, back in the 1700s, I believe, a man named Mansard developed this kind of roof so that he could hide the top story on his buildings to avoid high taxes. And I believe that as an admonition to you, members of the board, if the statute is not clarified and people continue to use a mansard roof, and I think if this building succeeds, Mr. Friedman should be given a gold star because the, the, the context now is, is off by five or six or seven feet of any building where a mansard roof is being compared to a hip roof. And I think the gentleman who just talked made that point. I have not seen the code, but I think the code was written at a time where people were only talking about hip roofs. And I think it's something that the board needs to look into because it's a big gap, like five feet or more possibly in this construction of any building. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I guess I better. Uh, could I have a moment to address uh, the last two issues, Mr. Mr. Baldwin? Uh, both both comments. I okay. I'd like to just explain how I calculated. Please. What I calculated: the building height is the vertical distance from the average original grade to the mean level of the highest gable. I, and then it goes on to say, or slope of a hip roof. My interpretation is that the mean level of the highest gable, or if you have a hip roof, it's to the slope, the mean level of the slope of the hip roof, because you don't have a gable on a hip roof. But so I. If you extend that hip roof out, then. There's no. But my interpretation is there's no, there's no uh, <coughs> hip roof there, but just let me finish. Uh, so my determination was based on the fact that that is a gable end. <laughs> where the roof pit starts, slope, slope. And that mean level was determined as a result of that. And that, that, that can, that's, can be challenged. I have no problem. Anybody can challenge that. The, the unfortunate part here is that the permit was issued for anybody who wants to challenge that is the permit was issued in November. And there is a 30-day period by which you can appeal my decision. So I believe that's a non-issue tonight's meeting because the permit's already been issued. Is that decision publishable? We have no means to publish building permits. I issue over 600 building permits a year and it would be politically the town hasn't been in a position to want to to notify every abutter of every building permit. It's That's an almost impossible task. And certainly if the townspeople want to do that then they need to get a hold of their councillors 
and, and, and have the ordinance change, and we'll be glad to do that. So you're saying there's 30 days, but nobody but the people who submitted the thing know what happened? No, ma'am, that's true. But that isn't unlike almost every town around. And I'm not saying it's the right thing. I'm not, but I'm not saying that's the right thing. I'm just saying that that's the way the policy is. And if, and if townspeople want to change that, then that's not a problem. I mean, they need to do that, though. It, it's, it's an issue that's not only, it's not unique to Cape Elizabeth. I, I'm not the policy maker. I just do what the audience tells me. But I believe it's a non-issue in regards to this at this point. I would, uh, I would have to agree with you. I, I, unfortunately, this board must deal with the issues that are presented to us. We have to apply the ordinances uh, and interpret them uh, in the best fashion that we can based on precedent as, as we know it and as the code enforcement officer uh, helps us to understand it. Uh, and, and we also have to deal with the administrative uh, uh, rules and ordinances of this municipality. And uh, while we may, uh, certainly I would agree with, with you that um, perhaps the notice provisions are lacking, as, as Bruce has pointed out to you, it's, it's pretty much standard operating procedure in most municipalities, not only within the state of Maine probably, but within other states. Uh, it, 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 uh, it's an unfortunate situation. But the only way that it can, can be uh, remedied is, is uh, uh, by uh, uh, some legislative change in town council, something that, that we really have no control over. Is there anyone else who has anything? This gentleman. Yes. I am, my name is William Gillian, and I live in one of the properties over there. Um, would it be safe to say that any resident of Cape Elizabeth could build this same structure and then um, say that they didn't do an original you know, elevation at the end and then just go through the same process of, of, you know, ignoring the 35 foot or interpreting it that way and building roughly 46 feet high? Well, it's an interesting question. question. Uh, well, you don't have to answer me, but I just thought I'd say that. Thanks. I, I, we're, we'll take that as a rhetorical question and, and, and leave it at that. My name is Arlen Rothman, and I am married to the fellow who spoke before. We are immediate abutters, and I'd like to just add a comment or two that he uh, didn't include that, that comes from both of us. And uh, in, in speaking to Bruce's comments about the lack of uh, notice, this is really problematic because obviously there was no chance to come forward and look at what was being proposed. In particular, even uh, we close our cottage. Ours is a summer cottage. We've lived there for 18 years and uh, have very much enjoyed it. And uh, we did ask Bruce to about any plans that had been submitted when we closed up in October. And uh, they had not been submitted at that point, And we did not hear about anything uh, until well into the new year. Uh, so we'd like to ask, uh, one of the points that we really wanted to make is obviously this is a, we consider this structure too tall, that point has clearly been made. And we feel that it, it violates the spirit of the zoning, zoning ordinance which calls for new structures to be compatible with the character, scenic value, and traditional uses of the neighborhood in which they're built. I know that's a point that's been made before. I hope that point really comes home when you look at the two pictures submitted by my husband. Uh, the, the visual impact is very striking and very disturbing. So we asked Mr. Friedman to voluntarily work with his neighbors to arrive at a mutually agreeable solution to this, this significant problem. This building, uh, we feel that the building permit for this house should never have been issued. The design of this house violates both the spirit and the letter of the zoning ordinance. And if Mr. Friedman refuses to work with the neighbors on a solution, then we believe that the Zoning Board of Appeals should rescind the building permit and reconsider the proposed design, taking into cons consideration the points made tonight. Uh, we'd really like to request also that any solution to this issue be proposed, uh, that uh, might be proposed, be exposed to a public forum uh, in evenings such as this. Thank you.
Any uh, anyone else? Do, uh, does anyone on the board have any uh, comments in response to any of the uh, comments from the public? Step four. Uh, when, uh, when, uh, I'm sorry, what's your name again? Uh, Johan. Johan. When Johan was uh, showing us this site and saying it would have been normal, you know, we're assuming that this was a normal site on which the original cottage stood and that there was drainage running off to either side. In fact, that was not the case. In fact, any of us who live down Excuse there... Excuse me. Penny, would you come sorry. closer to the mic? Sorry. It, there was not drainage on all sides of the original site. And uh, any of us who live down there can attest to the fact that uh, the original cottage, sometimes in the wintertime, was, you know, sitting sort of in a pond. You know, the, so the original cottage that was there was sitting on... Uh, what do you call those? Cinderwall. Not cinder blocks. They were pilings. Pilings. Yeah, pilings. Pilings. Yes, yes, and that kept it out of the water. But uh, and the other thing I wanted to say is that the new building is not significantly different in location from the other building, and I think you can see that by just looking in the photographs and kind of there are a couple of landmarks there that haven't moved that you can see that the new cottage is moved back very slightly from where the original cottage was. So those are the only other points I wanted to make. Thank you. Penny, when you took your measurements to arrive at the uh, 35, and I think it was 41, Yeah. did you do that with anybody else or perhaps document how you I, I No, I didn't. I did it with a 100-foot tape measure and a, a, you know, just I tacked the tape to the bottom of one of the posts and you know took a measurement to the to the first level and then took a measurement from the bottom of the first level to the ridge. Uh, Steve, I don't think there's any numbers. dispute over that. It, the, the, from the foundation up, the, the house is built exactly to plans. There's, there's no dispute there. Well, exactly to plans, except the plans call for the height of the plans start at right. this grade level here. And where the height of the building actually starts is from the slab. But my point is, yes. So the framework the, is exactly the, the, the framework. The framework that you see here is, uh, yeah, the from the bottom of the posts to the top of the ridge is 41 feet. But the plan that you see here starts the 41 feet, starts the 35 feet down here below the slab. So you the were standing on the footing is the that Chuck what you, question you was to do with on the footing sorry. itself. I was just asking, were you standing on the footing when you did that five foot calculation? To yes. The bottom of your nose. Yes. Standing on the footing. Well, I wasn't standing on the actual footing, but the footing was exposed okay. at that point. So you were equal in height to it. Yeah. 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 And I also question whether or not I mean, and you can see this. The ground is really soft. It's really excavable excavatable with a shovel, it would be really easy for you to see the, uh, you know, everything that's there. It's not mysterious. It's not, it's, uh, it's there. Thank you. Bruce, to the comments you just made, the entirety of the issue is surrounding grade to the foundation. Correct. It's pretty much agreed on the, on the roof issue where you take your measurements from the slope? Yes. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would, uh, would like to come forward? Yes. Please. Take your time, sir. But if you, if, if you would, so that we can get this on the record, we'd appreciate your speaking into the microphone.
I noticed that the all the politicians. On excuse me, sir. Would, would you, sir? From the notes. Excuse me, sir. Would, would would you state your name, please, for the record? Would you? Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Wayne Tibbetts. I live at 138 Bridgeton Road in Westbrook. For the last 50 odd years, I have summered right here. I. I hate to see the way things are developing here. And that's, that is exactly what is going to happen, is developing. If it hadn't been for the capable hands of Cappy Tucker, it would have happened earlier. But it, it's, it's